Hi guys, welcome to a new location. Today we are here in the country of Lithuania. My first Baltic country ever, so I'm really excited. I'm going to stay here for five days. The first day I will start here at the capital city of Vilnius and then I will rent a car at the airport and drive around for three days through the countryside to end my last day again here in Vilnius if I can see uh, everything today. So that's uh, the planning for me. So time to explore. I'm going to put my luggage at my hostel a uh, couple minutes walking from here and then I'll start my tour through Vilnius and all the highlights Vilnius has to offer. I just arrived to the place where I will stay for two nights, the downtown forest hotel. It's So off we go, it's a 10 minute walk to uh, the first highlight of the city and we already have a beautiful viewpoint. So it's really cold, it's a uh, minus 15 degrees. We are already passing the first beautiful church of the day and I guess it's not the final one. It's a five minutes walk and then we are at the port of Don. Artos Vartai, the gate of Down, 440 meters that way. Ausos Vartai, as they call it here in Lithuania, is one of the most important monuments of the city. It was built in the 16th century as part of a defensive city wall and is the last standing city gate. You can watch me In the front of the gate you will also see bullet holes from its past of course and the local people who are going through the gate after a couple of meters they turn around and they do their prayers and I see it uh, yeah almost everyone do it The Church of St. Casimir in the City Hall Square is the oldest Baroque church of Vilnius. It was built between 1616 and 1618. In the mid-8th century, the church underwent a facelift and was crowned with a unique dome. So that's another beautiful church. Now, before me, I see the City Hall of Vilnius. And of course, there, the City Square. But my hands are freezing. I'm going to find something to eat or to drink. Yeah, warm up a little bit. The front side of the city hall. Now I find something to eat. It's a five minute walk. It's called Cozy and you can uh, have a breakfast there. So that's what I'm uh, going to do now. And then I will continue my trip. My walking trip through Vilnius. So that's the name of the restaurant Cozy.
So at the Cathedral Square you will find of course the Cathedral of Vilnius and also the Palace of the Duke. And on top of the hill next to the Cathedral Square you will find the Jedimaya's Tower. So here we are at the Cathedral Square. There you have the Cathedral. And there right behind the Palace of the Duke. So I am going to visit the Cathedral of Phineas in a minute, but before that we are going to the Palace of the Grand Duke. It was originally built in the 15th century and it's located right behind the Cathedral of Phineas. It was built to honor the rulers of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania and for four centuries it was the administrative and political center of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. So you see, I did my homework before I came to uh, Lithuania. Here it is. Here's a little ice skating rink. So that was a good vibe there at the courtyard of the Palace of the Duke. Maybe I visit it again uh, this evening. But now we are continuing. We are going to the Cathedral of Vilnius. So the tower is uh, closed on Sundays, that's too bad, so today I can uh, climb the tower for a viewpoint, but maybe the last day here in Lithuania I'm also in Vilnius, so that's uh, an opportunity to climb the tower. But I will see some beautiful viewpoints today, because now I go to the Jedimaya's tower, and uh, it's on the hill, so you have a beautiful view of uh, the city of Vilnius, so I'm excited. So from the Jinamina Tower you have a beautiful viewpoint of Vilnius and the surrounding area. This tower is a symbol of Vilnius and by extension maybe even Lithuania. It is inhabited this hill since the Neolithic era. There you see the monument of the three crosses. It's my next stop. Now I'm going to take the cable car back down. So I will uh, continue my trip. And after that I will visit the Republic of Utopis. It's a real strange story I will tell you later. You can also choose to do it by foot. But in these very conditions I rather take the cable car. It's uh, 2 euros for uh, up and down.
So it's a trail that goes up and Google Maps says it's uh, like eight minutes walk. So that's not that, that long. From this place you have a beautiful view of the films. There you see the Genemaya's Tower, Cathedral. Now we are going to the Republic of Uzupis, but uh, if you are there, first we are going to eat something because I have to warm up a little bit and then uh, we are continue exploring Uzupis. We are coming from there, the three crosses, and it's a 10 minutes walk to Uzupis. We are passing here another beautiful church, the Saint Anne's Church. We have the Utsopia Cavina, that's uh, the place where I'm going to eat something and then I will visit Uzupis. Uzupis is on that side of the water. And look at that sofa. Here we have it. Uzopia Republica. So, about the Free Republic of Utsopis. Once upon a time, this area was one of the poorest parts of the city. It was home to Jewish migrants and laborers. Once the Nazi occupation came around, unfortunately a lot of residents were deported to hard labor and concentration camps. So the town was making way for less desirable members of society to move into the neighborhood and it got a bad name. In fact, during the Soviet era, this was the most neglected part of the city. When Lithuania got its independence, it became a huge art district because of the cheap housing. Then in the 90s, they declared the district the Free Republic. Although many saw this as a little tongue-cheek, they do have their own border control, their own flag, priests, churches and the parliament.
walking back to the hostel. It's from Utopis, like a five minute walk. So what can I tell you about Lithuania? Lithuania is a country in the Baltic region of Europe. It's one of the three Baltic states after Estonia and Latvia and lies on the eastern shore of the Baltic Sea. Its neighboring counties are Russia, Poland, Latvia, Belarus and a maritime border to Sweden. Lithuania has a population of 2.8 million people. The capital and largest city is Vilnius and the people speak Lithuanian, one of the few living Baltic languages and the most widely spoken. The country got independent in 1990 and joined the European Union in 2004. The currency of Lithuania is the Euro and almost 80% of the population is Catholic. So Vilnius is a historical and cultural gem. The city has one of the largest remaining medieval city centers in all of Europe and proudly sits on the UNESCO World Heritage List. Around the neoclassical city hall and cathedral you can find nearly 2000 remarkable buildings and monuments. So I'm currently back in the hostel, the downtown forest hotel. And uh, yeah, part two of Vilnius is for uh, the last day of my stay here in uh, Lithuania. So let me give you a quick tour around the hostel. This is my room. together with seven other people uh, but it's okay it is pretty cold in the room but there is something to make it warmer it's uh, 10 euros for a night so it's very cheap and uh, I'll also go uh, get my car at the airport for tomorrow because tomorrow my road trip starts uh, to the north of Lithuania so I'm excited Good morning guys, day two. I just rented a car from Enterprise at the airport of Vilnius. It's 100 euros for three days, uh, full insurance. Uh, it's a Toyota Yaris. I'm now uh, heading way to the Trakai National Park. It's already 11 a.m. so I'm a little bit behind schedule because I also want to see the city of Kaunas this day. And yeah, it's already dark at uh, 4, 4 p.m. or something. So that's uh, not many time for me left, but let's go. Look how beautiful all these wooden houses are, all these colors. We're just arriving at the parking lot of the Trakai National Park. So I'm gonna put my car away and then I go uh, walk around this village for a bit before I go to the National Park. So look how beautiful all this is. It's beautiful. Wow. So let's take this detour follow this trail and then follow the water till I uh, reach the castle I think it's like a 10 minute walk or something oh my god I just stretched a little bit too far with my pants because I didn't want to fall and look at this
but it will have to do till the end of this stay here in uh, Lithuania because I don't have an extra pair. I think what you see there is a museum of the historical national park of Trakai. I don't know it's open. First I'm going to go to the castle for sure, but maybe that's something I can do later. But uh, like I said to you guys, I don't have much time before it's going to be dark again. So, and I also want to visit Kaunas. So we will have to see. There, I don't know if you can see it guys. There's a castle already, so it's not that far. Today it's already so cold again, it's uh, minus 18 degrees, so I feel my cheeks freezing off. Let's walk around the castle first. And this castle, the Trakai castle, is located between two lakes and it's really a photogenic place. Look how far this lake goes, all the way there to the hilly side. It's like you're in a fairy tale again, because, yeah, look at this. It's mainly Gothic style, um, it was built in the 14th century but got a uh, makeover in the 15th century. And you know, Trakai, the village here, was once the capital of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. So it's bursting full with history. And it's only a half hour drive with the car from Vilnius. So yeah, I'm happy that I visit this place. It's definitely Lithuania's most famous castle and it's really a must see if you are here in the country. And now because it's January, I have the luck that there's almost no tourists. But it's also possible that I can go inside of the castle just because it's January. Now I'm going to stroll around for a bit, take a couple of pictures and uh, then I will leave to uh, Kaunas. I don't think I have time to visit that museum I was talking earlier about because it's already 1, 1 p.m. Let's go to Kaunas now. Savaitę viršuviškių gatvėje Vilniuje esančią medaugę būtyje jis būtus ketvirtame ir penktame aukštuose. Gaisro metu buvo... So I just arrived here at a parking spot close to the center of Kaunas. I'm going to stroll around there for maybe one or two hours and then I uh, find something to eat and I go to my hotel. So let's explore Kaunas. So I find myself a short track to the center.
this is a beautiful church called St. Michael the Archangel. And now we are going to the old town. Look at all those ice plates floating in the river. So I'm here at the old part of Kaunas, the old city center. I found a parking spot right to the castle of Kaunas and it's closed, sadly enough, because this castle is also closed every Monday, so I can't visit it. But I didn't have enough time either, because I want to stroll around the old center a little bit. Kaunas is the second largest city of Lithuania after Vilnius and is an important cultural center. Highlights to see in the old town is the city hall, lots of beautiful churches, the castle of course. Look at all the beautiful colored houses. I think this is the town square. The big Christmas tree. And what a beautiful church. I think this town square is one of the most beautiful squares I've ever seen. The town square of Kaunas. So that was my stroll around beautiful Kaunas. I didn't expect it, but it was really good, really nice. Now back to the car, going to my hotel, check in, rest a bit, and then I will find something good to eat, maybe some local food of Lithuania. See you in a bit. So I'm staying at a very bad hotel. That's how it's called.
beautiful view over the river. This is called the Pirates of the Caribbean room. I really like this concept. It's uh, 30 euros for a night. A little me time. So guys, I just found myself a restaurant where you can eat typical Lithuanian food. It's two kilometers where I'm staying, so, but I take the car and I don't know the name of the restaurant, but I will put it here. And uh, yeah, let's go. Good night guys, see you all tomorrow. So guys, day three here in uh, Lithuania. It's minus eight degrees. It's uh, 7.30 in the morning. And I'm heading to Klaipeda, a city uh, west at the coast of uh, Lithuania. So I'm gonna see the Baltic Sea. Iranian splits. I'm leaving because it's a three hour drive to Klaipeda. <laughs> So my first stop of the day here at the Koranian Spit is at a little village called Smiltain and I'm now at the Lithuanian Sea Museum because I'm going to walk from the port of Klaipeda to the Baltic Sea it's a 7 minute walk Wow, from here you have a beautiful view of the Baltic coast. Let's hop on the beach for a minute. So 
So the Caronian Spit is a peninsula with a length of almost 100 kilometers. On the peninsula you can find the Caronian Spit National Park, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, due to its unique ecosystem and natural beauty. In the middle of the spit, a border separates the strip of land into the Russian and the Lithuanian side. That means that if you want to visit the Lithuanian side, which is not connected to the mainland, you will have to take the ferry in the Lithuanian city of Klaipeda. And like I said earlier, if you want to buy a ticket for the ferry, the return ticket, you will have to pay 20 euro 50 for the car and all the passengers. Now I'm almost back at the car for a 45 minute drive to Nida. It's almost the farthest point of the Lithuanian side, close to the Russian border. If you are not with the car but you are a passenger or you are with the bus, I don't know what the ticket fare for the ferry is, but I think it's a couple euros, it's not that uh, expensive I think. And from there I go back to Smiltain, where the ferry is, back to Klaipeda and I'll stroll around the city of Klaipeda. So I arrived here in the village of Nida and I'm looking for something to eat. I think I found a bakery because I didn't have breakfast and it's already 1 p.m. So I'm quite hungry. Hello my friends. What do you want? Are you interested? Yeah. I think it's, he wants to be my friend. Bye bye. Bye bye. No, no, stay there, stay there. Stay there. It's okay. Bye bye. So I bought something to eat, but I don't know what. It was pure on sight. And then you have this. No idea what's in it. Oh, it's with meat in it. It's like a sausage roll. One of the things you must do when you are in the village of Nida is to just stroll around. Admire the colorful traditional houses and also walk along past the harbor. It's also really beautiful. From here in the harbor of Nida you already can see the dune of Parnidis. There are we going to. 
undoubtedly breathtaking views. Everything is turned into ice. Now we go on to the next stop of the day, the Parnell is Dune. So the Parnidis Dune is the main site in Nida and also on the whole peninsula. With a height of 52 meters, this sand dune is one of the largest of the Coronian Spit. Also, this is a wandering dune, meaning it moves a couple centimeters each year. In fact, even though they move slowly, the wandering dunes of the Coronian Spit have managed to swallow several villages over the past centuries. Some people believe that this is where the Parandis Dune got its name from, as it translates going through Nida and has traveled through the village multiple times already. So from the point where I'm sitting now, hiding for the wind, you have a beautiful view, not only of the endless sands that's stretching out in front of me, but also from the lagoon on the left side and the Baltic Sea on the right side. Also, most of the sand is covered by snow, but it's an amazing view. So here you see a memory of the French war prisoners who contributed to the development of the landscape of the Coronian Spit. What a breathtaking view here on top of the Paradise Dune. So we are in the village of Juat Krante and there you can find the Hill of Witches. Let's get a walk over there. It's right here above me, so a quick stroll before we go back to the ferry because I hope to see some parts of Klaipeda today. And here we are. The Hill of the Witches. So inside this park you will spot 80 wooden sculptures showing carvings of Lithuanian folklore and pagan traditions. It's so quiet and peaceful here. I really love the Lithuanian nature already. I really have to go now to Klaipeda to the ferry because 
otherwise it's gonna be dark. But the Coronian speed was really worth it, even in winter times. So I can imagine how this would be in summer. But yeah, what can I say? Lithuania already stole my heart. So the last stop on my visit list today is the city of Klaipeda. It's a place where you take the ferry to the Coronian Spit. And I think that I have maybe 30, 45 minutes to walk around a bit. And then I will uh, leave to my hotel. It's another hour drive. So it's been a quite a busy day. Here you can have a nice stroll on the waterfront. So I'm going to walk around the old town of Klaipeda and this city used to be German. That's why the architecture here looks totally different from the rest of the country. So here you have the theater square. So that's it. I'm going back to the car and make myself ready for a one hour drive to my hotel, Hotel Porto. And I'm starving already, so uh, let's find something to eat. So guys, I just arrived here at Hotel Porto in the village of Klunje. I'll give you a quick room tour. The bedroom. My sleeping place. And what is the view for today? The parking lot. There you see my Toyota Yaris. I paid 51 euros for one night. I wanted to have a little bit more comfort this night because the next couple of days it will be a lot less. I will sleep uh, in a bus for a night to Warsaw and I will stay at a cabin hostel at the airport of Vilnius the last day. So this little bit of extra comfort will do me well. Good morning guys, day four already. Yesterday I was so tired I didn't went to a restaurant anymore but I ordered some room service. So. I went to bed early and today it's a fresh new day, I'm excited. I'm going to visit the Cold War Museum hidden somewhere in a big forest and also the Hill of Crosses. And after that I'm going to Vilnius to uh, give my car back. I'm now going to get some breakfast here at the Hotel Porto. Okay guys, I'm ready. Let's go to the Cold War Museum, hidden somewhere in the Zematios National Park. It's a 20 minute drive, so let's get it going. So we are now riding through the Zematios National Park. It's only 10 minutes before we arrive. And look how beautiful.
So here we are at the Gold War Museum. It opened up half an hour ago, so let's check it out. Let's see the view of the watchtower. So you have four missile silos, one, two, three, and a fourth one is behind the building, the bunker. I think the weather is perfect for a full experience of everything that the Cold War has to offer. There you have the entrance. So this museum is located on the site of a former Soviet nuclear missile base and is situated deep in the heart of the Zemaitia National Park. Built in the 1960s in secret from the Lithuanian people, this base had enough firepower to flatten most of Europe. There is a small exhibition on the history of the Cold War in the Baltic countries and on the construction and role of the base. Wow, this is such an interesting museum. It now contains examples of political propaganda from the Cold War period. On the left hand side, you will see propaganda posters from the Western world. And on the right, from the Soviet Union and other communist countries. You will also see a map indicating how the world was divided into two opposing camps during the Cold War.
weapons of mass destruction, not only on strategic objects. Yo, mate, what is the exit? Oh, never mind. Just go on, just go on. So here we are inside a missile silo. Goodbye, my friend. So I really recommend you guys to visit this Cold War Museum here in Lithuania. It's uh, very interesting. I spent one hour and a half at this place and it costs 10 euro for one adult. Now let's give that audio guide back and go to the car. So I just saw this sign and close in this area at the Zemaitia National Park there's also a storage of warheads and also another guard post and military houses because I really think this is a beautiful national park. I'm going to walk around for a bit enjoy nature and try to find those places it wasn't a map so it can be that difficult so here you have the warhead storage it wasn't difficult to find the doll i just followed the road and they have a small side road and then you come to this place It's so fascinating. My wondering and interest is so much bigger after this trip in Lithuania about the Cold War, about the Soviet Union. I really want to know more and to visit more places with this interesting past. So who knows where my next destination is. Now I'm going to search for the military houses. And that will be the last thing. And then I will go to the Hill of Crosses. My last stop before returning to Vilnius. There behind the trees, you see the military houses. I wonder if I can go any closer. Let's have a look. Here's the gate. We are now at the military base, the former military base. There you have the first house. I still don't know if it's forbidden to come here or not. I didn't saw a sign, so... Very interesting to walk around here. Also in this amazing area, the Zemaitia National Park. It looks really fantastic, especially in the winter. way to the Hill of Crosses. From the Cold War Museum to the Hill of Crosses it's like 1 hour 30. I think I'm not going to spend more than 30-40 minutes there 
and from then on it's straight forward to Vilnius. I just arrived here at the parking lot of the Hill of Crosses. No entrance fee. There it is. This hill just outside the city of Chao Lei in northern Lithuania covers more than 100,000 crucifiers and other religious icons. The exact origins of this place remain a mystery, but many appeared at the end of the 19th century. During the Soviet era, this religious expression opposed the ideology of the regime and that's why the site was destroyed several times. But the local people kept rebuilding it despite the political danger. That's why this place is a symbol of faith and hope to Lithuania. This place is so scary and interesting at the same time. 100,000 crucifies, it's insane. This is definitely worth it to stop by if you are on a road trip through Lithuania. Oh, it's freezing, such a cold breeze. Let's get back to the car. Back in Vilnius, I just dropped my car at the airport and the taxi took me to the train station of Vilnius and then we'll eat something at the Snekutis restaurant before I go to my hostel, the capsule hostel and that's it for me for today and I'm now going to store my luggage at the station there are easy lockers for it So the day started raining and that's why it's extremely slippery now. Everywhere you see people uh, sliding away, including myself. I'm trying to find the snow part so I don't slip away. What can I say? Life of a traveler. So I'm going to eat something at the Snekutis restaurant. It's one of the best restaurants in Vilnius for Lithuanian local food. So let's try it out and it's also very cheap. Look how cozy Vilnius is at night.
So I stayed at this capsule hostel for 20 euros for a night. It's close to the airport, so it's very easy. Now I'm going back to the city center for my last couple hours here in Lithuania. So I still have four hours left here in Vilnius. Time enough to visit the Museum of Freedom and Occupation and also stroll around the old center for the last time. The museum is open at 10 a.m. and is right in front of me. There you have it. Wow, this was such a fascinating museum. Here you learn everything about the Nazi occupation in uh, Lithuania, the Soviet occupation, and also about the KGB, how they worked here. And uh, even in the basement, you find a KGB prison. So it was really interesting to read and learn everything about uh, that period of uh, history in Lithuania. So really interesting. Definitely recommend you to visit this if you are in uh, Vilnius. Now I will go back to the city center to the old town to stroll around for a bit, maybe eat something. I'm hungry. Cathedral Vilnius at the Cathedral Square and I'm on my way to the old town to visit the Pili Street, it's the main street of the old center, the most lively street, the University of Vilnius and just stroll around to the smallest streets of the old town. So this street behind me is the Pili Street and the Pili Street connects the Cathedral Square with the City Hall Square. It's also one of the liveliest main streets of the old city center.
This beautiful Vilnius University is located right next to the Pali Street and is the largest university in the country. This university complex presents all the important architectural styles that have been revealed in Lithuania. Gothic, Baroque, Renaissance and Neoclassicism. the old town of Vilnius it really gives me the true feeling of what the Baltic states looked like in my head everywhere you see baroque buildings and authentic restaurants it's really beautiful Okay guys, that's it for me here in the beautiful country of Lithuania. I'm going to take the taxi to the airport and going back to my home country, Belgium. I really love this country and I will put it on everyone's bucket list to come to Lithuania and visit this beautiful country. And thank you for watching. I hope you like this video. If you do, please give me a thumbs up and a reaction in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Location, and I will see you again in another location. Ciao, goodbye and ikitada. If you send me the location, then I'll be right there